Hey everybody, we're going to start modeling our Batman figure and in this first video we're going to set up our reference images to help guide us as we model this figure. Um, we're going to do it from scratch. So this is kind of what we're going for, the finished product. And so this finished model is ready to be textured and rigged and all the other stuff which we'll eventually get to. But let's start from the beginning. So I'm going to go File, New, and it'll ask, do I want to restart the file for me since I've already got something open? Um, you'll probably just open it up and you'll have your cube and camera and lights just like this. So I'm actually going to select the cube, just get rid of it by pressing X. Give us a clean start. We'll leave the camera and lights alone for now. So let me turn on my screencast buttons so you can see what I'm clicking. Alright, so when I press a button you'll see it right down here in this area. Alright, now these two menus here, the one is on the on the left and the one on the right here. The left menu, press T to bring that in and out and the menu on the right you're going to press N to bring that one in and out if you didn't remember. So let's add a few uh, plugins. We're going to turn on a few plugins that make that will make our lives a little bit easier. So under File, go to User Preferences and under Add-ons, go ahead and search for Import and you're looking for a plugin called Import Images as Planes. So make sure that's checked on and then click Save User Settings. And then while we're here, go to Interface. Make sure you've got these two items checked. The Zoom to Mouse Position and Rotate Around Selection. Make sure you've got both of those checked on. They're, they're going to make your life um, a lot easier while you're navigating around the screen. So check those off and then Save User Settings again. And now we can close out the user preferences and start on our planes. Before I actually bring in the images, I want to make a cube to give me an idea of how big I want my Batman figure to be. So let's, you know what, we should have kept our cube in there, sorry. So there's our cube, we're going to use this as our reference. Um, so we have to set it to the right size though. So bring up this menu by pressing N. And if you scroll towards the top, you'll see a section that says dimensions. Now, these are just plain numbers. They don't really mean anything right now. So let's change them to a unit that makes a little bit more sense to us. We're going to use um, feet and inches. And that can be set under the scene settings, which is right here. And under units, select imperial. And now you can see the numbers have changed to, uh, to feet. So our cube, we want it to be two feet by two feet and we're gonna do make it we're gonna make it six feet tall just like that now it's centered so it's like halfway through the ground let's raise it up the thing's six feet tall let's raise it up halfway so under location put three feet for the Z and now it sits on the ground grid that we've got okay um, Switch to my front view. I'm actually going to press 5 on the number pad to go to ortho view. Um, orthographic is going to be less distorted. Uh, it takes perspective out of the picture. So any lines that are parallel, they stay parallel no matter how far away it's from you. So I'm going to grab this on the x-axis, move it out of the way a little bit. And now we're going to add our our images. Um, make sure that your 3D cursor is centered at zero zero. And the way you can make sure is do a shift S, and then do cursor to center. And now our 3D cursor is zeroed out. So we're going to come over to File and Import. And because of that plugin we turned on, we have this as an option: Images as Planes. Go ahead and select that, find the Batman image you downloaded, and you can double click it, and you can see it creates a plane, but it looks empty. And 
we just have to turn on the right kind of shading method in our viewport before we can see it. So let me get rid of this menu by pressing N. And then down here, we have our shading options. We want this to show texture. There it is. So come over here to the materials tab and look for the shading options. We're going to turn on shade list. That way it's not affected by light and shadows and the image will be visible no matter how dark or how light the scene is. So sorry if I'm going fast. Um, you can always pause the video, rewind it and watch it again if I go uh, through something too fast for you. It's better that I do it fast instead of dragging on and going too slow and making the video more boring than it is. I know that me talking, I'm not a fan of myself talking, so you probably don't want to hear me rambling on um, and just, yeah, making it slower than it has to be. So I'm going to be going kind of fast and I'm just trust that you pause the video when you need to and rewind if you missed something that I did or if you want to just make sure you didn't um, skip a step that I did. So I've got our, our image selected here. I need to rotate this straight up and down. So it's going to be rotated around the x-axis, which is this red line. So I'm going to press R for rotate, X to lock in the x-axis, and instead of using the mouse to rotate it, I'm going to actually type in 90 for 90 degrees. And you can see that the image now is standing straight up like I need it to be. I'm going to press 1 on the number pad to go to my front view. GZ to grab it on the z-axis. So I bring it up and I'm looking at my cube as as the uh, guide for how big I want this or where I want the image. So I'm going to have the image scale up now by pressing S and scale it. And it doesn't have to be exactly the same height as your cube. Just get it somewhere close. And now we're going to grab this I'm looking at Batman's heel, this heel right here. I'm going to line this up with the red line best I can. So grab with G, lock it into the Z axis, and then bring it down. Just kind of eyeball where that heel is, line it up with the red line. And then I also want to center this Batman with the blue line. So grab with G, press X to lock it into the X axis, and there you go. Now I want to cut out the other two Batman pictures because I'm just interested in the front view for this one. But before I cut anything out, let's go ahead and make a duplicate by pressing Shift D. And see there's a duplicate now, but I don't want to move it. So I'm going to press Escape to drop it. And it looks like there's only one, but there's actually two there. We're going to rotate this one um, negative 90 degrees. So I'm going to press R. I'm going to lock it into the Z axis by pressing Z. And then type it in negative 90 to spin it around that way. Now I did negative 90 instead of 90 because of the direction that this side view is facing. If I did 90, then the front of the side view is actually going to face the wrong way. So you want to make sure you rotated that one negative 90 degrees. All right. So let's move these out of the way. Now we're going to grab this one along the X axis, G, X, push it this way. And our first image, I'm going to go G, Y, push it back that way. And our reference cube, we're good with this. We can just select it and press H to hide it for now. Get it out of the way. And so we line up our first image to the blue line, but we never lined up our second duplicated image. So I'm going to press 3 to go to my right view. And it's this image that I want lined up with the blue line. So grab Y. Get that lined up right around the blue line, just like that. Now let's get rid of the extra two, or the extra parts of the images, now that we have them where we want them. So select the image, press tab to go into edit mode, and I'm going to add some loop cuts. Now I could add just one, but I'm going to try two loop cuts for this. Um, yep, so click, press escape to keep them centered. And then I'm going to select these four vertices to delete. So select them by holding down Shift, press X to delete, and make sure you delete vertices. So it leaves behind only the part of the image that I need. And then do that 
for the other one as well. We're in edit mode, and you'll have to press tab to go back to uh, object mode. Then you can select your other image, tab again to go back into edit mode, control R to add a loop cut. And for this one, I'm going to delete those two vertices along that side. And so now we're left with just the parts of the images that we need, or as close to it as possible. And we're going to do a couple more tweaks to these, and then we'll be ready to actually start modeling. So press tab to go back to object mode. And under the materials tab, we're going to come down and select turn on transparency. Set that alpha to 0.5 so we can kind of see through the image. And then come over here to its object settings, which looks like a cube, and look for X ray. You know what? The transparency is not showing because we forgot to change the shading method. So press N to bring up this menu. Look for shading. Change it from multi-texture to GLSL. There you go. Now we can see through these images like we were intending. Okay, so this one's set to X-ray. Select your other reference plane. Make sure that's set to X-ray. And we are good to go to start modeling in the next video. So I'll catch you all then.